behold, this is a Craftsman 10 inch table saw. I just got this on sale for 160 bucks and hoping that I can share some useful information with you because I did not find a whole lot about it online. There's the crazy long model number there. Um, and this is such a feature packed saw that uh, it has two different diagrams to be able to point out everything that's on it. 36 different parts that they identify for you. Um, so let's try and go through these. I'm new to table saws myself. I'm, I've used a few before, but I have uh, never owned one. But I've owned this for a day. I've actually been doing stuff with it, um, and I've really enjoyed using it. It's quiet. It doesn't uh, shake much. It, it, uh, it's got a lot of safety features, too, which is good for a newbie. So let's get into it. We've got um, this table insert here, which is where your blade is stored. You see there's a little lock symbol there and an unlock symbol. I'm going to unlock it. It's just like that. And then you put your finger into the little hole there and you can pop it up and out. And that will give you access to your blade. You see here it is a 10 inch 24 tooth Craftsman branded blade that um, is supposed to be a good combination blade. Uh, for doing cross cuts and also rip cuts and it does a nice job with both i have tried it out for both and pretty pleased with it um, this thing comes with a, a lot of little tools to help you along and to keep you from chopping your fingers off like uh, these blade guards here they go on here it's hard to do one-handed actually that's upside down that's the correct way um, but that's the way that it would be oriented on the saw. And then these little guys here, these um, anti-kickback pawls. Um, it's a pair of them, they're spring-loaded. They go on the back here, but, um, once I get this stuff out of the way, about like that. And what they do is they actually grab into the wood if the wood starts to slide back toward the saw. And they keep that wood from being able to basically get launched back out that's a kickback uh, for those of you who aren't uh, that familiar with table saws it's a pretty serious concern okay so uh, other things that we have on the tabletop obviously we have a fence here uh, we have a uh, this is used for miter guiding if you want to do miter cuts it can do uh, 90 degree cuts that's what it's set up for right now but you see Hopefully you can see there are little um, marks here for different angles that you can adjust this to. You just twist this knob and then you can adjust it and then tighten it back down. Uh, unfortunately, there are no positive stops on this. Like there's no like little bumps where it'll lock itself into new positions. You have to eyeball it yourself, but it's pretty accurate. Um, and we've got our fence here. And you can see it um, slides back and forth pretty smoothly and it goes all the way out to uh, well it measures to 12 inches but you can actually get probably 13 out of it it'll uh, lock out all the way to the very edge here of the table so uh, you know you're just eyeballing your measurement at that point so that is uh, on the right side of the saw blade on the left side it only goes out to 10 inches so that's as much as you can measure to cut off with this um, this saw now of course you could uh, build your own extensions or whatever but this is what it comes with so down below here we can see the adjustments that it has um, this is the height crank as I crank this in the clockwise direction it raises our uh, blade, that blade height can go up to, I believe, uh, three and an eighth inches. I know that it is not tall enough to be able to do a two by four that's standing on its side. Um, it, which of course means it won't do a four by four either. But um, you see that it's got a riving knife on the back, which is used to keep the wood from pinching back together after it gets past the saw. And um, 
that's another safety feature the riving knife keeps uh, you from having a kickback situation where it tries to launch that wood back at you and that can uh, cause some pretty serious injury uh, speaking of uh, injury and safety this thing is unplugged uh, safety first uh, right here we have uh, this is the angle you can adjust the blade if you want to do a bevel cut and there's a lock lever here that you go down uh, that would be uh, counterclockwise and then you can adjust the bevel on it and you see that the saw changes accordingly and I have found that this is um, it's almost accurate I have to have it a little bit to the left of the notch for it to actually be correct and I have measured this using a uh, square to make sure that when it says that it's at zero it's actually at zero um, so make sure you do that when you buy this saw to make sure that the, the folks at the factory in China that uh, made this put that uh, label on absolutely correctly. It has a nice little, um, see this says press to reset, it's a little button there. If the saw gets too hot, if it gets overloaded, it will shut itself down to protect itself from damage. That's a nice feature, uh, keep you from uh, ruining your saw, maybe going through something that's a little bit too thick or something that bound up because it hit a knot or uh, hit a nail or something. And uh, we also have, of course, on and off, and they're uh, coated in rubber, and I assume that's to protect them from dust so they don't get gummed up, but I imagine it would also be a little bit helpful if you get caught in the rain. Not that this is a waterproof saw. I do not recommend hosing it off at the end of the day. Um, but I've noticed that this is a little bit touchy, and that may actually be a safety feature. When you push it, if you don't push it long enough, it doesn't turn the saw on. You have to hold it for about half a second for it to actually work. You can't just tap it on, which I'd consider a good thing. Um, it's got um, a variety of additional tools, including this is a uh, sub-fence piece. It just stores down there underneath. Um, this piece clamps onto your fence in case you're doing a cut where you need to get right up against the um, saw blade here. And normally you would have this on top of the saw blade and you can see that it's got this little nub sticking out to the side. Now the fence can't get all the way up to the very edge of the saw blade because of that. And uh, this little guy here can get underneath it. So if you need to be doing some really thin rips, then you add on the sub fence and it will uh, get the job done for you accurately and safely. And like I said, it just stores there. And I should have explained, this has a little locking lever there which holds it in place, both when it's in storage and when it's on the fence up here. Um, we also have storage, actually, for your fence uh, underneath the saw. And it's reasonably portable. The thing weighs 52 pounds, according to the box. I haven't checked that. But uh, you can store your fence down there underneath. And it also has a little push stick here. Uh, it's a plastic single piece push stick. Got a little notch in the end of it there. You can see that would go over the end of your board. And then you can push it along when you get close to uh, that blade if you want to stay safe, which of course you should. And that stores very conveniently in there. And it locks in place. It's got little snaps to hold it in place, which is very convenient. So when you're operating the saw, you reach down with your right hand. When you're ready to do that final push there, and then when you're done, you just stick it back where it belongs. Now this little, uh, the miter uh, slide thing, miter shuttle sled, uh, slides along in these channels and it actually it locks in i don't think i'd mentioned that yet it's got this little flange on the sides that gives it a sort of a t profile and that um, is held down by these little lips here and keeps it a little bit more stable although you see that it will rock when it's in there so you have to make sure you're pushing down on it as you're sliding it. but this piece 
fits into a little bit of a channel holder underneath. So it stores underneath too. And these guys here, this is actually a pair of wrenches that come with the saw. They're used to undo the blade if you want to do a blade change or if you want to take the blade out so you can clean it in case you get resin or something on it. And I'll just give you a little bit of a look of what the underside of the saw looks like. It's uh, cleaner now than it'll probably ever be. But you see the little plastic gear there that is for adjusting the miter angle or shouldn't uh, not the miter angle you know what I'm talking about um, and here's a handsome craftsman branded face of it that is red plastic but uh, the frame of it this tube frame here is steel uh, it's sturdy stuff I'm not concerned about the construction of it uh, one nice little thoughtful feature about this stand is that one of the legs, it's funny that it's only one of them, has an adjustable end on it. So if you're on a wobbly surface, you can uh, stabilize your saw by adjusting the length just by twisting it. Um, also, I wanted to show you the uh, way that it attaches to the frame of the saw. It's just wing nuts, wing nuts and bolts that slide out. So if you want to disassemble this, you can take it apart and then the saw legs they just fold up like scissors so it's more or less flat when uh, you fold it up you can hang it on a wall in your garage or whatever um, this is the dust port you can see that there's some uh, shredded wood in there that i need to get out um, you want to keep this dust port free and clear of uh, wood it's funny i'm just seeing just now that there's a little bit of um, scuffing here uh, from manufacture I don't know what that's about, but I'm not concerned about it. It's just part of the metal working process. But anyway, you can attach a, um, a vacuum a shop vac to this. This is two and a half inches. That's what it says in the manual anyway. I haven't actually hooked it up to a shop vac yet. And you can see the evidence of that all over my driveway. Um, and, well, that's about it. I've, I've enjoyed this saw. I, uh, I think it's been a worthy investment so far and it's operated smoothly doing cuts through. It's been nice and easy. I've done a bunch of rip cuts, never had a kickback situation. I have been using the safety features on it though. And um, for 160 bucks, it's kind of hard to, to go wrong. It's plenty powerful and you know, the cat approves. Check it out.